Over the past few years, there has been a huge rise in the popularity of cleaning, decluttering and organizing hacks. Even people who are not professionals are seeing the benefit of a clean and tidy home and sharing with millions of followers on Instagram, Facebook and TikTok. Today, we are talking about the Clean and Tidy show and about the rise of the clean fluencer with our lovely guest, Penny Moises. You're listening to the Declutter Hub podcast, bringing you tried and tested, no-nonsense tips and advice from the leading experts in decluttering and organizing your home. Now, here's your host, Leslie Spellman. Hello and welcome listeners, I'm Leslie. If you're new to the Declutter Hub podcast, you're so welcome. What you'll find here is reality, empathy, and advice by the bucket load. Don't forget you can watch and listen in on YouTube where you'll see the lovely Penny and me in person. If you've been listening in over the past few weeks, you will have heard that the Clean and Tidy Show is our podcast sponsor. Very exciting. And today I'm delighted to be talking to Penny Moises, who is the founder of the Clean and Tidy Show. Welcome, Penny. Hello, thank you for having me. Delighted to be here. So let's talk a little bit about how we came to be in each other's worlds, Penny. So I'm going to say like six months ago or something like that, we got an email through about this thing called the Clean and Tidy Show. We were like, what, what, Clean and Tidy? That's got the decal sub written all over us. So we reached out to you and said, what can we do to help? And then that was the start of a fruitful relationship, wasn't it, I believe? It was indeed. And we're absolutely delighted to sponsor uh, the Declutter Hub podcast um, and delighted that you're going to participate at the show. I think there's so much in terms of content and expertise that you can bring. Um, and we're delighted that you're going to be speaking on our main stage and explaining how decluttering, organizing and cleaning kind of all fit together, because I think it's something that's really important. Um, so really excited to be working with you. Oh, thank you. So You've obviously had this brainwave to put together this brand new show because you have seen then, presumably, over the past couple of years, that cleaning, tidying and decluttering are now big business. Why do you think there's been such a euphoric rise in people's interest in that? Well, I think we all like to keep a nice home, um, but I think we've been really inspired by the likes of Marie Kondo, The Home Edit, Mrs. Hinch, Stacey Solomon. Um, and I think it's become something that we speak about more openly now in terms of the challenges and the methods um, and support each other through, particularly on the likes of social media. Um, I've been delighted that there's been the rise of the clean fluencer, if you like, or influencer, or indeed these incredibly talented digital creators that have certain open my eyes to how I can keep a better home. Um, I think in the pandemic, we were using our homes more and in a very different way. Um, I think now with the cost of living going up, I think we're going to be staying at home more again. Um, and so I think it's more important now than ever before that our homes support us as best they can. Yeah, and sometimes you need a little, little bit of help along the way. And it's an interesting term. We were chatting about this before we started recording, Penny. The term cleanfluencer. I've never used it before. I'm quite excited because I feel like I might be one of them. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I know I've not got like millions of followers on TikTok, but generally we do influence people out there with our podcasts and stuff. And so I wonder whether I'm a cleanfluencer. What do you think? Absolutely. And I think... It's a term I think that some of the community really like and others don't like as much um, because we are absolutely influenced by, um, as I say, the, these really creative um uh, digital creators um but whether we want to call it cleaning inspirator or something otherwise i think really it's about being um inspired and motivated to do things around the home so i'm a massive fan whatever we want to call uh, these wonderful people so i'm presuming penny that you've you've had this you want to nurture this little baby this is your thing this is not some big corporate thing this is your idea that came from something that you wanted to do and that came from your own experience and when we had that conversation like six months ago that was what inspired Ingrid and I to get involved because we want people to understand and to have that need and that's what it was born from so tell us a little bit about your own experience and how you suddenly switched into something that really hasn't been done before and decide to put on a clean and tidy show. 
So uh, my interest was piqued um, a number of years ago when I started following the likes of Mrs. Hinch and Stacey Solomon and thought that there was um, a, a real interest in this. So I, I suppose that was a very, very kind of um, peak of interest at that point and, and not much more than that. But it was when I suddenly went into um, lockdown, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this, I was working full time, I was um, parenting full time, I lost complete control of my home because I was eating more than I'd ever done in, in the home and my dining room suddenly was a workspace and where we needed to eat and uh, and socialise you know, as a, as a family of three at that point with my two dogs. Um, and I really discovered then that not only was uh, social media a place for pretty pictures and tips and tricks that you've mentioned to be shared, but actually a massive support network um, and community of people. And so I really discovered there an opportunity to bring together that community face to face uh, on a large scale. Um, but also the reason the show came about was really an identification of a gap in the market for an inclusive and accessible home show that isn't about your kind of big budgets home ownership but actually whether you share rent or indeed own your home it's about making that that place better for you um and to uh, give you some more context in terms of my personal experience with with social media I saw a similar um, community when I first became a mum and I was learning different things uh, and, and going to uh, Instagram specifically for a source of advice when it came to weaning my child and, and different things like that. Um, and so I really do think that the, the power of social media is massive so that people really feel like they belong um, and can relate to people and, and learn this, these pieces of information. And so I think it's, it's, is massive in the homemaking my homemaking scenario but I also think it, it's got a lot of potential to grow even further and support people. Absolutely and you've hit the nail on the head there with a couple of things that again Maid England and I really want to be involved which is relatable which we try to be in the decl and we believe that's the success of what we're trying to build is that trying to not be perfect to be relatable progress not perfection all of those kind of things are so important and you know so someone like Stacey Solomon now not everybody around the world will know who Stacey Solomon is she's a Brit she was on X Factor which a lot of people in the states in particular I think all around the world I think X Factor is a global brand or it was before it kind of got taken off it's a bit like America, America's Got Talent you know Australia's Got Talent etc She's just this lovely girl. I mean, she's not a girl anymore. She got married like a few weeks ago, didn't she? And so she's like 32 or something like that. But she's very, very relatable. And she does things that anybody can do in their own home. And that's what it is. Whereas there's a lot of trade shows out there which are all about aspirational things. And of course, we aspire to have a lovely, clean home. But we can do that without spending thousands of pounds to achieve it. And I think that's what it's all about. And actually find some of the best home improvements that you can ever make start with decluttering organizing tidying cleaning you don't need to go out there and put an extension on you just need to work with what you've got and make it better and make it somewhere that you want to be so you have kind of outed yourself a little bit in saying that there's a little bit of chaos you're not on your own there and to be fair <laughs> penny in lockdown everyone was like what is this and how do i do this it's nice to be able to trot off to work every day and leave it all behind you so where do you sit on the tidy scale can i out you i mean not that it matters at all Absolutely. You sit, what do you think? <laughs> when, you're, when you're the host of the clean and tidy show you have to kind of maybe play the game well, I think it's it's the first thing that I should say is I'm certainly not the person with all the answers, but I'm I think as an as an events professional, that's what I've done for the, the whole of my career is find other people that know lots of information that I can then bring together to make something wonderful. So essentially, that's what I'm doing with the the digital creators and uh, experts um, that are attending the show, and, and obviously the brands that are there too. Um, but in terms of where I sit on the tidy scale, it really depends what day of the week it is. Um, I think. In my early career, I was working in events. I was often in the office for 60 plus hours a week. Um, I would go away a few weeks at a time and it was so easy just to close the door on a really horrific bedroom <laughs> scenario where I just packed to go away or wherever it might be. Um, and often miss my my spot on the rotor where, where I was living with, with friends to, to clean. Um, but as I became a wife and then a mother, I think I just thought that there would be something inherent in me and I would just 
suddenly be a great homemaker and I'd be able to keep everything clean and tidy and organized. But, you know, it won't surprise you that didn't necessarily <laughs> suddenly come to me. Um, so my my home is an evolving place. I mentioned that I had a child. I've now got two boys. I've got uh, one who's nearly three and one who's just um, turned one. So as you can imagine, that in terms of the things around the home, just to keep them entertained, um, but I have a husband who is a DIY enthusiast, so that can kind of add another element to it. And in fact, we've just converted our downstairs, our under the stairs space into a, a toilet um, and also in the process of trying to convert our loft. So in terms of the places that I used to just be able to hide things, they don't exist anymore. So I am, I would say I'm going on a journey um, in terms of trying to find places for those items or indeed identifying whether I need them anymore. And I think there's been some real kind of poignant points. So as an example, I mentioned my, my younger son has just turned one. What do we do with all of his things? things and actually the idea of getting rid of those things or repurposing them which is something that's incredibly important to us at the clean and tidy home show that we really do repurpose rather than put you know anything into landfill um you know how how do I do that and when should I do that will I have another child if if that's a decision that we're making making now so that those things can go on to somebody else then you know how does that sit between me and my husband so I think the things that I've been through in the last few years have really just made me look at my belongings and my home. And indeed, you spoke about aspirations. You know, what are my aspirations from a home? Do I just want a, a bigger place or do I actually want something that's going to serve me better? And a lot of the time, as you say, it's not just about having extra space. Um, so, yes, I would say in terms of the tidy scale, I've been on a journey. I continue going on one um, and it's ever, ever evolving. And I certainly don't have the perfect home. <laughs> It sounds to me like you've got your third child already pending with the clean and tidy show, to be fair, with a three-year-old and a one-year-old. I'm like, how do you put on a trade show with a three-year-old and a one-year-old and lockdown? Like, hmm, that's a lot of work. So take your time. Take your time before plunging into number three, because honestly, that will tip you over the edge. I'm not going to lie. But yes, anyway, lovely, lovely <laughs> retrospectively, but definitely tip you over the edge. So um, obviously over the past little while, while you've been – gathering um, experts and people that are going to um, have stands at the show and things like that you've been talking to a lot of people so you've been immersing yourself very much in the decluttering world in particular and we're delighted of course that um, Ingrid and it was this was Ingrid and I's baby a little bit as well uh, we were on the board of APDO the Association of Professional Declutterers and Organizers and you will have heard us speaking about that before Ingrid was president and I had various hats on um, and so we're delighted that APDO are at the, are at the show as well so you've been talking to us, you've been talking about to APDO representatives, Sean and Jackie, about decluttering specifically. So is there anything that you've learned about the industry that's come as a bit of a revelation to you? I have learned so much and learning new things every day. So I think if I was to take away a, a few key things, they would be that the specialisms when it comes to decluttering and organising, that, that there are so many different approaches as to um, how you can declutter and organise your home. Um, and I think that's what's really lovely is you can pick what suits you um, at your stage of life and your home, um, because there will be some approaches that that won't quite resonate, but other, other, others that do. And I think that's that's really lovely. I think one thing that's been really interesting is that no matter which service providers I speak to they will all say everybody's really worried about me coming into their home or a lot of um, my clients um, will apologize for what their house looks like before they come and so I think that that has really resonated with me that it's not just me that has those feelings um, and that I think that we need to do a lot more to advocate getting help in the home and not feeling guilty or worried about that or that we're failing in some way. Um, and that's been across cleaning professionals, decluttering, uh, declutterers and organisers and more. And so I think that's something that I really want to be um, talking about within the community. Finally, uh, just delighted to be working with the British Institute of Cleaning Science. And I think what was interesting discussing with them is actually that they now have training schemes. And if you 
look at the amount of time it takes for somebody to become a professional cleaner, we really shouldn't give ourselves such a hard time for not knowing all of the information about how to keep a home. Um, so a few key things from them, contact time or shelf life of products um, and colour coding and all these different things that from a kind of commercial cleaning perspective are uh, there's investment in terms of taking the time to understand so why should we uh, as uh, as people that live in homes just know again that inherent thing why should we just know what to do actually we need to learn that so I think that's where I'm really really excited to be able to bring that expertise together and ultimately make people feel better and be able to look after their homes better um, and really about kind of that incremental change nobody I've, I've spoken to thinks the best opportunity is to just just go all holes barred and, and do everything. Um, it's actually being kind to yourself and your home incrementally making it better. Definitely. I think it, I think what's, that's what's quite interesting in the membership, really, um, Penny, because people have never been taught this stuff. So a lot of the people who come into our world, their parents just said, go and clean your room, go and tidy your room, never really explained why and how, even then they might not have even known it themselves as parents. And so I think to go into the, you know, the science, the emotions, the psychology of decluttering and cleaning, of course, all the same thing is it, it's quite a revelation. So the light bulbs go on and it's only when you get to that deep seated level, if you want to, some people, it just happens. Some people are just built that way and it's perfectly fine. They don't have a problem with it. They can keep what they want, get rid of what they want, got that throughput of stuff, can clean the house. It's just habit and um, they just do it. But there are so many people who don't. And it's nice. What, what we love is being able to explain these things so that people gradually can have those mindset changes. That's what it's all about. So, so important. And so I'm really delighted that app are there i know there are opportunities to speak to those as experts as well if people have got specific ideas of course people can come and talk to ingrid and i as well because we're going to be at a stand so if anybody wants to ask something please don't ever feel the show that there's a stupid question because there absolutely isn't if you've got that question and wondering something whether it's about whether that's about cleaning tidying decluttering keeping house resets routines whatever that might be ask the question because if you don't ask you're never going to find out and you're always going to wonder I think that's the most important thing and that of course is what I loved about your ethos with the clean and tidy show is that it's completely inclusive and getting back down to basics so Talk to me a little bit about the show then. What's, what's that going to look like? Where is it? I know that a lot of people who are listening today won't be able to attend, sadly. Um, but what, what's it going to be? Tell us about it. So we are going to be at XL London on the 8th and 9th of October um, and 10,000 people will be attending across the weekend and we have um, about 150 brands participating. We have a main stage which is where um, you'll be doing your, your session um, and we'll be hearing from lots of different experts. We have a demo stage where there'll be lots of different demonstrations whether it's folding methods or flower arranging or tablescaping, uh, making your own cleaning products. No, um, stop, 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 stop. What's tablescape? <laughs> what's tablescaping? I want to know. I want to know what that is. I've never heard of that. Yeah, I think if you've got an idea, you got an idea. It sounds really lovely. Want to impress your family and friends yes. at Christmas, and you want to have a really involved um, kind of table centre runner and everything all really lovely laid out. Um, that is what what uh, tablescaping is. So oh, wow, I'm totally going to be watching tables. Can we? Can we? Am I allowed to come <laughs> off my stand and go and watch the tablescaping? I'm just going to be walking around doing things and leaving Ingrid on the stand to. to Shout out to everyone while I'm trying to impress people with my Christmas centerpiece. I'm sorry, I very rudely interrupted you. No. As is my one penny. Please, please carry on. No, not at all. So the demo stage, which we're really excited about. Um, we've also got a community hub where we're going to be doing friend working or speed mating, if you like, and really making sure that those people that are coming have the opportunity to meet uh, those digital creators or experts that have inspired them. Um, we have an RC expert area, uh, which is where you can speak to specifically professional decluttered and organisers about certain specialisms in a one on one setting. It's interesting, actually, something that you just touched on earlier um, is about their kind of essentially being no no shame in asking any questions and we have a campaign shine not shame which is very much it doesn't matter the size of your home what it looks like what your approach is that this is a safe place for everybody and also 
We believe that there is no such thing as common sense uh, in its truest form, that actually common sense is a very subjective thing and you can only make decisions based on what you know. So I remember seeing on a, um, a Facebook group a, a number of weeks ago that um, someone was challenging someone for saying about how they'd stack their pots and putting your pots with the lids upside down so that you can stack them. And someone commented saying, well, that's just common sense. Well, I certainly haven't had either uh, the time or the opportunity to think right how should I stack these best and you know unless you you turn something around you won't have that opportunity so I think that's what's really lovely that we'll be creating these spaces that even if you um you want you want to ask a question you can feel safe to do so in in a much kind of smaller an informal setting um, and lots and lots of other things um, going going on at the show. Um, but ultimately, the aim is to make people feel really, really wonderful about what space that they have. Um, and if they can go away with just a bit more information or a new product to use um, that they feel really confident about, um, then then we've we've done what we set out to do. I love, honestly, I'm getting more and more into it. I love all these ideas. Can we just steal all your ideas, Penny, for the membership? <laughs> Friend working, love it. What was it called, mate? Dating. Speed mating. Speed, Speed mating. mating, love it. <laughs> Shine, not shame, love it. Oh my God, this is so good. I love it. Yeah, but obviously we can't steal it, sadly. But anyway, <laughs> but I do well, love we it. Work, we can work together on it. So <laughs> yeah, we can, we can work. collaborate. <laughs> yeah, I love these ideas. Um. Okay, I'm I'm getting completely distracted now by all the fantastic things that you're doing from a marketing perspective, but that's because you've been in the industry for a long time. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I can only aspire to that. But anyway, um, tell us about who's going to be talking at the show. So we're really excited to have Georgina Burnett, uh, aka the Home Genie, um, hosting our main stage. Uh, we've also got Richard Pearson, who's on a show called uh, Filthy House SOS, and he's a, a runs a cleaning company um, himself. He'll be hosting the demo stage. Then we've got a whole host of different speakers. So we've got um, Francesca, who is from um, The Apprentice. Um, she's actually attending with her brand H2O Squared. She'll be uh, speaking on our sustainability panel. Um, we've got a panel that talks about challenges within the home and we're delighted to have Chloe and Ted, her Springer Spaniel from the Super Spaniel show, talking about how Ted actually helps her uh, organise things in the home or, or clear clutter for her to uh, make way uh, in her wheelchair or empty the washing machine. Um, so we're looking at lots and lots of different uh, challenges and solutions and approaches within, within the home. Um, another example of a talk that we have on the main stage is uh, from the KonMari uh, certified um, consultants. Um, so you may be familiar with Marie Kondo uh, and her brand KonMari. Um, they'll be participating at the show um, and also Marie Kondo herself will be involved in some way. Um, so more information on that um, will be announced soon. We're, of course, delighted that you and Ingrid will be uh, speaking on the main stage. Um, and I think it's going to work really well that you'll almost be setting the scene for the rest of the content and really kind of laying the foundations when it comes to decluttering, organising and where cleaning fits into that. Uh, so really uh, looking forward to, to that. Oh, we can't wait. I'm just but now as I listen to everything that's going on, I'm a bit like, have I got time to do a talk? Because I want to be doing all these other things. <laughs> I don't know, really. But anyway, so we'll see. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be really interesting, Penny, for us to be able to take it back down to basics. for Because some people don't really understand the difference between the different components of making a lovely home, whether that's decluttering, organising, tidying, resets, routines. So it'll be nice to take things back down to basics. What sort of people are you anticipating coming to the show? Are you expecting people that are really on top of their houses or people that are struggling with their houses or a little bit of both? Anyone and everyone. Um, complete range. People that are interested but need to find out more. Um, we mentioned various digital creators, clean influencers, influencers um, that will be uh, excited to meet a lot of the brands face to face that they've worked with for, for a number of years. Um, many experts, so whether that's cleaning professionals, professional declutterers and organisers. Um, I know my mum's really excited about coming and keeps telling me about all the different things that she's been um, arranging, whether that's her air and cupboard most recently or, or otherwise. Um, but I think that that's one thing that I want to make 
uh, very clear is that this is not just an event for people that are active on social media. My mum is a perfect example of, of somebody who needs to better understand um, what she can do within her home. And she's actually exploring um, uh, downsizing as an example. And so to go through, again, her loft tends to be the loft, doesn't it, where she's just hidden things from her four kids um, over the years and to try and understand what she would actually need to take with her and delve into some of the emotions around that is really, really tricky. So um, it, as I say, there's no need to be on social media at all as much as a lot of our community are. Um, really, it's anyone and everyone that has an interest in making their home work better for them one of the lovely things for us, Penny, is that we're going to be able to meet some of our members and people in our podcast communities, our Facebook communities, because if they are close or local to London or even in the UK, we've got people coming from all around the UK. They're coming to the show and we're going to be able to meet them. And I think that's absolutely lovely. Now, some of the people are like, oh, I'm not sure whether I should come on my own, but they know that they've got a community of people that they're going to be able to meet up with when they get there. And so you talked about friend working so tell us a little bit more about that and how that fits in I think what's been really interesting about our community is that a lot of people have made friends for life up and down the country that they have never met in real life and we're given the opportunity to do that so it's incredibly important for us to make sure that we have a safe space where people feel really comfortable to attend so where there might be other home shows where it would be more likely you'd attend with friends or family um by all means, you can do that with a clean and tidy home show. But if you have an interest in this and there's not somebody that you want to bring with you, but you know that there are going to be people there or indeed you're open to meet people there or come on your own and you're comfortable to do so, then we would love you to do that. Um, so one reason that we have a group of ambassadors called our Shine Squad is that they will be having different sessions um, in our community hub and various other places where you can simply go along and meet them and chat to them. I mentioned places like the RC Expert. By all means, you can just go in and start a conversation with somebody um so really for us it's about creating that safe space for people to feel confident to come on their on their own if indeed that's something they want to do so listeners i'm sure you'll all agree that this sounds like a fantastic show what we love about it is the fact that it's completely aligned with everything that we do here at the declutter hub we want things to be inclusive we want homes to be accessible to be lovely to be a safe space to be a comfortable space that we love are proud of and want to be in that's what it's all about we don't want that to have to cost thousands and thousands of pounds to achieve that and i think what penny's put together at the clean and tidy show is going to be everything about that so i can't wait to be involved ingrid can't wait to be involved we want to wish you the very very best of luck penny for what i'm sure will be a hugely successful show thank you so much for being here today and thank you for being our podcast sponsor just one more thing before we go we need to talk about next week and next week we are going to be talking all about decluttering your porch so a porch means different things to different people in the uk our porches are incy wincy tiny little things and in other places in the world porches are huge wrap around things where you do beautiful things and so like sit in the deep south sunshine that's what i've got an idea of when i'm talking about a porch and we talk about that in next week's podcast so do tune in now if you can be or would love to be in london for the clean and tidy show on the 8th and 9th of october there are loads of links in our show notes to everything the instagram handles so you can start following you can sign up for the newsletter you can buy a ticket all of that will be in our show notes so go to declutterhub.com forward slash 206 for all the details so penny thank you so much for being here and we will see you at the show i'm sure we might see you before but we want to wish you the best of luck thank you thank you so much thank you for having me and really excited to see you there thanks so much for listening to the declutter hub podcast don't forget to subscribe to us in your podcast player so you don't miss an episode and we'll see you next week